Hello, this is Wade here with IG Labs, and welcome to episode two of our cybersecurity podcast series. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the role that artificial intelligence plays in the cybersecurity industry, talk about how companies such as NVIDIA are leveraging AI for cybersecurity. I'm going to highlight a couple of sessions from NVIDIA GTC 22 that's actually ongoing this week, and then I'll finish up today's episode by showing you a cool project out there in the developer community. So why AI? <clears throat> Up here on the screen is a 2021 report from IBM of the average total cost of a data breach per industry. As you can see, the healthcare industry is by far the leading industry. And when, when I say leading in this case, that's not a good thing, that they average the most, most dollar amount average per data breach. And, and in fact, in 2021 alone, the healthcare industry saw a 29.5% increase in the average cost of a data breach. And as you can see up on the screen, they're averaging around $9.23 million for the last year. <clears throat> Following the healthcare industry, you have the financial sector for obvious reasons. You have your ransomware groups and stuff like that. But I don't want you to think ransomware is limited to just the financial industry because they're just going after companies in general these days. After the financial industry, you have your pharmaceutical industry, and then next you have your tech industry, and then rounding out your top five is your energy sector. And again, your the top in this case is not a good thing. You don't want to be at the top industry in this graphic that's dis displayed right here. And so again, I post the question: Why AI? So some things that AI does is that it it continuously learns by consuming billions of data points. It can analyze relationships between threats to help, help you identify those malicious files or suspicious IPs or even insiders. And this can be done within minutes, if not seconds in some cases. And this is done by, again, taking those threats and automatically chaining them together to identify potential incidents. And then <clears throat> what AI and cybersecurity can do is that it, it can help your that analyst on your security team prioritize which is the most important alert first that, that it could be the difference between that adversary getting into your network and being able to have that lateral movement or ai can play that part in preventing that <clears throat> so and the way that ai gets after these things and that it leverages things such as the miter attack framework for example if you're in the industry, I'm sure you were familiar with the MITRE attack framework, but AI can take and potentially automatically highlight with that technique that that adversary may be using and give that analyst on your security team that jumpstart that they need to go ahead and mitigate that threat. <clears throat> Another thing that I'd like to highlight from the um, IBM 2021 report is that when an AI solution was fully deployed across a company, it provided the biggest cost mitigation. In fact, it was said that organizations who had an AI solution fully deployed saved on average $3.8 million as opposed to an organization who did not. And when you're in a business or own a business, saving money, that, that's, that's, that's what you want to do when you can. And by incorporating AI, an AI solution fully into your cybersecurity team, it can potentially help you save that money. Something else that AI does is that it, it helps solve those staffing problems that you may have, and it can help you create that more robust and automated incidents response workflow for your team. Those are some of the reasons like why AI, but where are we as a community? Are, are there, is there any type of publication or something that you can look out to to just kind of guide you with AI regarding cybersecurity? And in fact, there is. So actually earlier this month, NIST, which is your National Institute of Standards and Technology, they published their initial draft for the, their artificial intelligence risk manage, management framework. And this framework is intended to help manage risks to individuals or organizations in both the public and private sector that are associated with AI. And this is done by taking that innovative approach to address characteristics of AI, such as it's trustworthiness. Can you trust it? Is it accurate? The privacy and the robustness and even the safety, because with, with AI, there's always that risk as well. And you want to try to mitigate that, that unintended or harmful 
bias that AI could cause. <clears throat> and something to highlight is that this initiative was initially directed by Congress in 2020 to develop this framework. So ju around July 2021 is when that first RFI came out. And here we are in March 2022, where that first draft was just published this month. And the good thing to know is that with each draft, there's a workshop that's held to collaborate on this framework. And then f from the, from this month right here, after the workshops are done, they'll go into doing that second draft, which they hope to have done by summer or fall of this year. And then they the plan is for NIST plans to have that first official version of the AI risk management framework published in the winter of this year or early 2023 next year. So that's kind of just an overview of how the community is trying to help tackle the AI problem and give you some type of documentation that your organization can look to. So I want to transition over to, well, how, how are companies using AI for cybersecurity? So next, we'll be talking about NVIDIA and their Morpheus platform. <laughs> so Morpheus is NVIDIA's open application framework that enables those cybersecurity developers to create those AI pipelines for filtering, processing, and classifying that large amount of data in real time. And Morpheus enables that dynamic protection, gives you that real-time telemetry, and it adapts, has adaptive defenses. So as you're learning and training, it gets better. That that attack that happened previously or that that alert that it that you that previously occurred, it's it's getting only getting smarter on that alert. So it's triggering that system to help your security team out. <clears throat> and what Morpheus also does is it gives your security team that complete visibility into the threats and to your network by monitoring every packet that traverses through your data center. So that's a, for your average security team, monitoring your network is already very labor intensive. And the fact that Morpheus can take and monitor every single packet that traverses through your data center is incredible. And just to put that into context, let's say you're a typical data center may have a thousand servers, for example. That, that, that thousand servers equates to potentially over one billion network paths. And there's just no way for your security team to monitor that much data. It's just not possible. And what Morpheus is going to do, it's going to allow that professional on your security team to respond to that anomaly that it detects in real time as soon as that threat is identified and allows you to update, update your policies to mitigate that threat for future purposes. <clears throat> and some of the features of the of Morpheus is that it's built on the Rapids libraries, which is NVIDIA's libraries. Use, it utilizes deep learning framework and NVIDIA's Triton inference server. Morpheus, it makes it easier to analyze those logs and just helps lighten, this, lighten the workload on your security team. There's not, not to say that it replaces your security team. That's an important thing to keep in mind because when people hear AI, in the general public, they think that, oh man, soon I may not be employed, but the analyst part will always remain critical in this. And some things that, Mor that are cool about Morpheus is that you can deploy your own models using deep learning, or you can even, in cases, use one of NVIDIA's pre-trained models, and they have pre-trained models that you can build upon. And some of those models do things such as identify that leaked sensitive information, detect malware within your network, and again, help you analyze those logs. And a couple of their uh, pre-trained models that I'd like to mention are, they have one that's called classify leaked sensitive data. That's gonna do exactly what the title says. It's gonna help you find and classify that, those leak, that leaked sensitive data, such as your, your, your keys, your passwords, your credit card numbers, bank account numbers, and more. <clears throat> Another one of their pre-trained models is their profile behavior anomalies. It's going to take and catch those anomalies by profiling behaviors of your network to help you spot that malicious 
code or that misconfiguration within your network. And then it'll take from there, it'll specify which logs are used to target that, which were used to target that specific use case. <clears throat> Another one of their pre-trained models is their detect phishing attempts. And I don't think it's I need to state it, but phishing remains one of the top, top, top techniques that adversaries use to get into your network. And what this pre-trained model does is that it uses the, the NLP, that natural language processing AI model to analyze that, that, that email that you may receive and it'll classify that into spam, into spam or phishing categories automatically, so you don't have to you don't even, you don't have to worry about that. And one of their last models that I pre-trained models I'd like to talk about is uh, identify errors in server logs. And again, this is scanning those logs using that NLP predictive maintenance model to identify those errors and potential failures that normally wouldn't be flagged within your network. <clears throat> And again, and the NVIDIA Morpheus platform uses real-time telemetry, so it receives that network data in real time from that from NVIDIA's Bluefield DPU, that data, data processing unit, accelerated server, and it, it does this while having no impact to performance, which that's amazing. So, <clears throat> and some of the benefits to that to NVIDIA's Bluefield DPU is that it offloads, accelerates, and isolates your critical data center infrastructure functions. So that is a kind of just me blabbing about NVIDIA Morpheus. And I, at this time, I'd like to also kind of show you a video of Morpheus and what it does in real, just a better explanation maybe than what I did. But let's, let's take a look at it in action. It starts with a network. Here we see a representation of a network where dots are servers and lines, the edges, are packets flowing between those servers. Except in this network, Morpheus is deployed. This enables AI inferencing across your entire network, including east-west traffic. The particular model being used here has been trained to identify sensitive information, AWS credentials, GitHub credentials, private keys, passwords. If observed in the packet, these would appear as red lines, and we don't see any of that. Uh-oh, what happened? An updated configuration was deployed to a critical business app on this server. This update accidentally removed encryption, and now everything that communicates with that app sends and receives sensitive credentials in the clear. This can quickly impact additional servers. This translates to continuing exposure on the network. The AI model in Morpheus is searching through every packet for any of these credentials, continually flagging when it encounters such data. And rather than using pattern matching, this is done with a deep neural network, trained to generalize and identify patterns beyond static rule sets. Notice all of the individual lines. It's easy to see how quickly a human could be overwhelmed by the vast amount of data coming in. Scrolling through the raw data gives a sense of the massive scale and complexity that is involved. With Morpheus, we immediately see the lines that represent leaked sensitive information. By hovering over one of those red lines, we show complete info about the credential making it easy to triage and remediate. But what happens when this remediation is necessary? Morpheus enables cyber applications to integrate and collect information for automated incident management and action prioritization. Originating servers, destination servers, actual exposed credentials, and even the raw data is available. This speeds recovery and informs which keys were compromised and need to be rotated. With Morpheus, the chaos becomes manageable. Now that you've had a chance to view the video and hear me talk about NVIDIA Morpheus, I think I'll think it's time that I'll pivot over and talk about NVIDIA GTC 22, which is ongoing this week, and highlight a couple of sessions regarding AI within the cybersecurity industry. So the first, first session I'd like to highlight is a, there's a panel discussion, and it's the importance of AI in defensive cybersecurity. So this is going to be a discussion on more proactive and adaptive ways of addressing cyber threats with data science and AI. <clears throat> and for this session, the president and CEO of Intelligenesis, is our company, is going to be a part of that panel. So I'm registered. Make sure you all out there go check it out as well. It should be a great discussion from some leaders within the industry. The next session that I'd like to highlight is Accelerated Anti-Phishing Powered by NVIDIA DPU. And as we know, phishing remains one of the top top threats out there 
to our organizations and networks. And this is going to be a discussion on how NVIDIA's Bluefield DPU is used for real-time inspection of every browsing session against malicious code and content and things of that nature. And the last session from NVIDIA GTC that I'd personally like to highlight is build AI enhanced next generation cybersecurity solutions. And this is gonna be a discussion on how developers can take advantage of AI and data science by use, utilizing NVIDIA's Morpheus to, to get after those cyber threats out there in the community. So again, these are a couple of sessions from NVIDIA GTC that I think should be cool to check out. And again, even if you're not interested in these sessions, NVIDIA GTC 22 has sessions from multiple industries out there. And for today's podcast, again, I, like I did la the last one, I'd like to end on talking about a cool project out there in the NVIDIA developer community. So <clears throat> this project is called Deep Wave V2. And what this project is, is that it's, it provides autonomous navigation for blind people. And this, this is used running on a, a Jetson Nano, and it uses haptic touch to provide that, that information. And something cool about this project is that it costs less than $200. And you'll see in the video, but the, uh, <laughs> the initial version of this version one, the individual used their laptop as opposed to a Nano. And with, without further ado, I'll play the video for you all to see. And again, it's just a super cool project out there in the community. And something cool to note is that it's adding a sense, it's not taken away, so there's nothing in your ear. And again, like I mentioned, the individual used a laptop initially. And look how much more how much more comfortable you could be using a nano. And this is just showing you showing you it in real time. Your green line is your center and your red lines are gonna be your left and right limits and to help navigate you and tell you which ways you should and shouldn't go. So at this point of the the podcast, you've had an opportunity to hear me talk about the role that artificial intelligence plays in the cybersecurity industry. You've heard me talk about NVIDIA's Morpheus platform. And then I got to talk about a couple of cool sessions from GCC 22. And again, that's going on this week. And even if a session's already passed, you can go back and rewatch that session. And last but not least, I showed you a cool project out there in the developer community. And the, the developer community just provides an area and space for people to go and collaborate with ideas and things of that nature. So again, I'm Wade here with IG Labs, and thank you for tuning in to episode two of our cybersecurity podcast series.